Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a paper discussion video, so get ready with this paper, and let's go through the questions and answers together. Question 1 discusses an investigation to determine how different concentrations of sodium chloride solution affect the mass of the onions. An independent variable is the factor that the researcher manipulates or changes in an experiment to observe its effect on another variable. In this case, it is the concentration of sodium chloride solution. A2 wants you to complete a table to show how solutions of different concentrations can be prepared by proportional dilution. Distilled water is added to the stock solution to obtain other solutions with lower concentration. We can use the equation M1V1 equals to M2V2 to calculate the volume required. M refers to the concentration, and V refers to the volume. Let's use the preparation of the 1% solution as an example. M1 is the concentration of the stock solution, 20% in this case. V1 is what we want to determine. M2 is 1% the concentration of the new solution we want to make. V2 is the volume of the new solution we want to prepare. It is 140 cm cube. V1 equals 7. This means that we need to add 7 cm cube of the stock solution to distilled water to obtain the new solution. Therefore, 133 cm cube of distilled water is required. B shows the results of the investigation. The students calculated the percentage change in mass for a valid comparison. This is because the initial mass of onions is not constant. If we compare the final mass directly, we might misinterpret that the larger specimens gain more mass than the smaller ones. 2 wants you to suggest reasons why the conclusion map cannot be accepted. If the solution has the same water potential as the tissue, the net movement of water by osmosis would be zero. This means the mass of the sample would remain unchanged. We can read the concentration that causes 0% change from the graph to determine this concentration. In the graph, the two lines crosses the x-axis at different points. The conclusion is only supported by the onions left for 2 hours. For 49 hours, a 0% change in mass occurs at 3.1% sodium chloride. You can also comment on the experimental error. For example, there might be a random error when using a timer, so not all onions were left in the solutions for the fixed time. There are anomalous results on the graph. These are the data points or outcomes that deviate significantly from what is expected or considered normal within a given data set. For example, 5% after 48 hours. It is lower than the other points. The graph has a point-to-point -point joining. If a line of best fit is drawn, we might obtain a different value at the intersection. We do not test any intermediate concentrations of sodium chloride between 1% and 5% sodium chloride. It might change the shape of the line completely if we have other points in between and alter the points where they intersect the x-axis. No statistical analysis was done. Calculation of the standard error or 95% confidence interval was also not done for the comparison. So, we do not know if the difference in observations was significant or not. Lastly, not all onion cells have the same water potential. We do not know how much the results are affected by the water potential in each sample. C shows another experiment that investigates the effect of temperature on the rate of osmosis in turnips. In a design experiment question, you must include the description of the three variables, the critical procedure, reliability, safety precautions, and sometimes the control set. List down all the points you want to include, then arrange them in a logical sequence. However, risk assessment is not required in this case. First, list the values for the independent variable and describe how it is fixed. You should have at least five values. You can use other values, but ensure that they fall within the stated range. You can also use other logical methods to fix the temperature, but do describe them in detail. Then, we need to have a control variable for the specimen. For example, the same age of turnip must be used in the whole investigation. The surface area to volume ratio can affect the rate of osmosis. We can maintain a constant value by controlling the dimensions of the cubes. 
You don't have to use the same dimensions as my example, but you must state a logical value. Provide a method to ensure the same dimension will give you the next mark. We will place the specimens into beakers with distilled water at different temperatures. Describe the measurements made to obtain the dependent variable. You can follow the same method used in the earlier part of the question. A paper towel should be used to remove excess water from the turnip block before measuring the final mass. This prevents the results from being affected by the different amounts of water left on the surface of the blocks. For reliability, we must have at least three replicates for each independent variable. Mean values are calculated. 2. Complete the sketch graph to predict the effect of increasing the temperature. The x-axis is the independent variable and the y-axis is the dependent variable. Include the unit as well. The rate should increase when the temperature increases. This is due to the increasing kinetic energy of water molecules. The fluidity of the membrane also increases with temperature, leading to a greater movement of molecules through it. 3. Ask about the risk assessment. The knife used to cut the turnip may cause injury. We should cut it away from the hand to prevent this. The specimen may contain substances that cause allergic reactions in some. We should wear gloves while handling it. Lastly, hot water may lead to a burn injury. Heat-resistant gloves should be used throughout the investigation. Question 2 shows the fruit flies and the two genes involved in determining their eye color. Figure 2.2 illustrates the breeding test used to cross individuals with specific phenotypes. The parent fruit flies from the specimen tubes should be removed because they may reproduce with their offspring once they mature. This will lead to the production of offspring from an unwanted cross. Next, we have some information about crossing the first generation flies to obtain the second generation. Flies are tiny so it is challenging to observe their characteristics without the aid of an optical instrument. A hand lens or a binocular microscope can be used to distinguish the male and female fruit flies. Note that an electron microscope is not suitable for this purpose. We can use a pen brush or forceps to place them into the tube. We should not do it by hand as they can be easily squashed and killed. Table 2.2 shows the expected ratio and observed values from the cross. The null hypothesis for a chi-square test is always the same. We assume that there is no significant difference between the observed and expected results. 2 wants you to complete the table and calculate the chi-square value. The expected value can be calculated by multiplying the expected probability of each phenotype by the total number of offspring. Then, use the formula to calculate for each phenotype. Sum the values and you will obtain the calculated chi-square value. 3 wants you to make a conclusion based on the value. First, we have to obtain the critical chi-square value from the table. The critical probability we always use is 0.05. This means that we want to have a 95% confidence level in the conclusion we make. The degree of freedom in a chi-square test is n-1. n is the number of categories. In our case, there are four phenotypes minus one. The table shows us that our critical value is 7.815. Now, compare the calculated and critical values. If the calculated value is smaller than the critical value, P is greater than 0.05. The null hypothesis is accepted. D shows the carrier proteins coded by the B and R genes. Figure 2.4 shows the results of paper chromatography when the pigments in the eyes of the flies were analyzed. 1. Calculate the RF value of pigment 1. Use a ruler to measure how far the pigment has traveled from the origin and the distance of the solvent front from the origin. Note that you should take the center point of the pigment, not the starting point or the ending point. Express both values in millimeters and divide. On the printed paper, the answer is about 0.73. 2. State the conclusions that can be made from the results of the fruit fly breeding experiment in C and the chromatography results. The expected ratio 9331 indicates that we assume the genes are not linked when we carry out the genetic cross. 
Since the chi-squared test revealed no significant difference between the observed and the expected values, we can now conclude that the genes are not linked as predicted. The probability of dark red is 9 over 16, and white is 1 over 16. This indicates that the dominant allele codes for dark red, while white is recessive. The first paragraph of question 2 mentioned that dark red eyes are caused by the presence of both brown and bright red pigments. From figure 2.3, we now know that the dominant alleles code for the functional carrier proteins resulting in the entry of both guanine and tryptophan. This leads to the production of both pigments, resulting in dark red eyes. With that said, any flies with at least one dominant B and one dominant R allele have dark red eyes. White eyes can only be homozygous recessive. The chromatogram indicates that dark red eyes contain four pigments, while white eyes contain none. The last sentence below figure 2.3 says that pigment 4 is red under visible light. So it is drosopterin, the red pigment. The same sentence also mentioned that only two of the pigments can be seen under visible light, and none of them are brown. So we can conclude that none of the pigments are homochrome, possibly due to their insolubility in the solvent. Note that the colored pigment that we can see are observable under visible light. So the other pigments, which are only visible under UV light, are not brown or red pigments. That's all for today. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me at the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.